Hey there, everybody. I'm Sage Apopham, founder of the School of Evolutionary Herbalism, and thanks so much for joining me in this video. Um, this week's episode, I'm going to be talking about uh, therapeutic categories and specific remedies for the treatment of the urinary tract. Um, it's really common, I think, uh, for newer herbalists when they think of herbs that address the urinary tract for us to just kind of immediately think of diuretics, right? Diuretics, they're what make you pee more, and uh, sometimes it, it goes about that far. But there are a lot of different categories of plants that influence the kidneys and the urinary tract to support a variety of conditions, whether we're talking, you know, interstitial cystitis or urethritis to urinary tract infections to full-blown kidney stones. Um, there's a lot of different types of tissues there from the smooth muscles to the mucosa to the local immune system to the whole functioning of the kidneys. Um, there's a lot of different tissue types there and therefore a lot of different types of remedies that can affect the urinary tract. So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you in this week's episode. Thanks so much for joining me in this video. Be sure to like and subscribe below, whether that's on YouTube or on our blog or on the podcast. Um, just really appreciate all the support and your likes and subscribes and good comments and uh, things and reviews really uh, do support the channel. So thank you very much for that. And uh, hopefully you uh, enjoy this episode, learning something more about the kidneys and the urinary tract. Okay, uh, another question here from Donald person. Question number six, I have a client who's suffering from chronic inflammation of the urethra and the bladder. I believe the clinical term for this condition is interstitial cystitis. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Note, you are correct. Chron uh, inflammation of the urethra and bladder is interstitial cystitis. Haven't yet determined if it's due to microbial infection of the urinary tract, but she's been on strong antibiotics due to prolonged urinary infection with accompanying fevers. This followed by severe pain post passing small scale and shattering kidney stones through urination, which has potentially caused abrasion of the lining of the vessels. She's been experiencing cramping and lower abdominal pain and sought medical attention for kidney stone attacks. And at the moment, she's also having a hard time passing urine. She's looking to get off the meds and switching to an herbal regimen for the pain and apparent inflammation in the urinary tract. What are your top remedies here? Okay, good question, Donald. Um, yeah, so definitely um, tricky situation, you know, um, especially with the stones. Kidney stones are really difficult to treat. Um, they are excruciatingly painful. They are stubborn. They mm, take time. And, um, I've had the opportunity to treat a cup, have a couple kidney stone patients and, or clients. And while, um, we were able to provide some relief, we actually weren't able to like dissolve the stones, pass the stones painlessly and get them all back on track. Um, a lot of them required either, um, uh, what do you call it? Ult, um, not ultrasound. Well, maybe it is ultrasound. And we have like, they use some sort of like wavelengths to break the stones down a couple. And then another required actual surgery, um, just because the stones were way too big <clears throat> and it was getting dangerous. This can get dangerous. You, if you get a you know, a, a kidney stone completely blocking that pathway that can be really, really dangerous. So you got to be very careful here. Um, but there are certainly remedies that can help with um, the heat, the irritation, the inflammation, the pain, um, at least bring it down a few notches, hopefully. Um, okay, so let's just talk about main categories and a few specific remedies here. So one of the main ones here is antispasmodics. These are really important. Um, you're ex seeing experiencing cramping and lower abdominal pain. This is usually where most of the pain is coming from with kidney stones. Um, the smooth muscles around the ureters and bladder are cramping and spasming uh, to try to push that stone out. But you know, it's cramping around essentially a shard, a three dimensional shard of broken glass. Kidney stones aren't like a smooth little pebble. They are, yeah, literally like a a caltrop, like a spiked, a big spiky thing. They're ugly looking. Um, so antispasmodics, very important here. One of our key ones for the bladder and urinary tract is actually kava kava. 
Piper methysticum. It, this is a key antispasmodic for the bladder region um, and can help with the pain. It can also help with just the overall nervousness and tension and um, anxiety that comes along with being in that much pain, right? Cramp bark or viburnum opulus is another really good one. Lobelia inflata, always good for, um, yeah, cramping, smooth muscle spasms and things like that. Um, let's see, what's the other one here? Um, oh, darn it. Um, there's another, well, it's a little more specific for the digestive system, but it could be applicable here too, which would be wild yam or Dioscorea villosa um, is also a very excellent smooth muscle antispasmodic. <clears throat> okay, so then you were also mentioning some abrasions or, um, let's see, severe pain post-passing small scales. Uh, uh, yeah, potentially caused abrasion of the lining of the vessels. Okay, so if you're if there's abrasion in the lining of the vessels and maybe a little bit of bleeding, like pinkish coloration to the urine, the two main remedies that I would reach for there would be yarrow or Achillea millifolium. There's a number of benefits of, for yarrow here. A, it's very inflammation modulating. B, the... Um, Essential oils of yarrow are antiseptic and are passed through the urinary tract. Three, uh, sorry, it's a little hard to concentrate with all this noise. <laughs> um, I usually really like a quiet workspace. Um, and three um, is the wound healing effect of yarrow, right? It's a, a really, really powerful um, styptic, so it will help stop the bleeding, okay? Uh, if the bleeding is severe, the main remedy that I think is really the best for any type of internal bleeding, it also has a urinary tract affinity, is shepherd's purse or capsella bursa pastoris. Um, so yarrow and shepherd's purse, really specific for the bleeding side of it. You got your antispasmodics. <clears throat> then demulcents are always really indicated here. Um, they will just help soothe the heat and irritation and inflammation in the urinary tract, oftentimes providing a bit of lubrication in the urinary tract to just hopefully help that any kidney stones kind of glide along a little bit better. Uh, their main ones being corn silk or ZMAs. Corn silk is a very nice soothing diuretic or relaxant diuretic. The other one is cooch grass or um, agropyrin, I believe is the Latin name, agropyrin something or other. <laughs> uh, it's not a remedy I've used a ton, but I do know that is a key remedy used for, um, it's a very simple remedy. Um, but yeah, cooch grass is a urinary tract demulcent. Of course, marshmallow root or althea, um, can be used here as well, for sure. Um, then you have your more specific, uh, you know, stone breaking herbs. I put that in quotes because, you know, a lot of resources say they do that, which I believe they do. I just unfortunately have never seen it work that well. So I don't know if it was a dosage issue or maybe it was the wrong remedy. Or if sometimes kidney stones just get to a point where they just can't necessarily be dissolved, right? So the main ones here, there's um, there's a Central or South American remedy called Chanca Piedra, which literally means stone breaker. Um, I don't know what the Latin name of that plant is, but then in uh, Western herbalism, we mainly use gravel root here, which is Eupatorium purpureum. Gravel root is a good solid, reliable diuretic. Um, the way it was taught to me is that gravel root helps to take solids that have precipitated out of a fluid and then helps it re-dissolve back into that fluid. So that's where it's really great for kidney stones, but it also is really great for like arthritic deposits in the joints. Um, so, it, and it's a good diuretic, so it's gonna clear dampness uh, from the joints and uh, is therefore used for arthritic and rheumatic conditions as well. 
Um, and then uh, the uh, hydrangea. Hydrangea, I believe arborescens is the main species there. That is a remedy also used to help in the passage of kidney stones. Um, yes, there's the gravel root, hydrangea, chunka piedra. Those are the ones that are coming to mind off the top of my head. Um, generally speaking, oh, okay. And then we have our microbial infection remedies. So <clears throat> if there is an infection there, which, you know, essentially if there's backed up urine, the urine's not flowing, uh, if they've had to take a whole bunch of antibiotics, I'm assuming they were taking antibiotics because there was... Uh, an analysis done that determined that there was indeed infection. Uh, hopefully that was the case and they didn't just give them antibiotics for the hell of it, which unfortunately does seem to happen more often than one would imagine. Um, then, uh, you know, well, A, getting the flora back online is going to be super important. So there are certain um, probiotic products that are, are, kind of tailored specifically to the urinary tract. So that's very important. Um, those, the, the, the urinary tract, like the digestive system, should be lined with beneficial bacteria that are kind of that front line of defense. And there should be a whole host of beneficial microorganisms in there. Um, antibiotics, of course, like they do in the gut, would wipe them out there too. So finding a good urinary tract probiotic product could be a good place to start. But then, you know, our top remedy for UTIs really is uva ursi, Arctostaphylos uva ursi. Uh, it just is very, very reliable. Um, it works very well. It contains the, uh, you know, from a biochemical perspective, it contains the constituent arbutin, which goes through a biochemical process in the body, which turns it to another substance that is called a hydro damn it i can't remember the name of it hydro something or other shit <laughs> uh sorry for the language uh, i can't remember the name of the compound um but essentially that compound is an is a very specific antiseptic for the urinary tract that is passed through the urinary tract um and it just it's pretty reliable um it's going to be cooling to heat and inflammation and irritation, which is quite common in UTIs and kidney stones. It is diuretic and it is on the astringent, tonic astringent side. So um, really great for if there's lax, uh, laxity um, within the bladder and the tissues there kind of need to be toned up. Um, this is also true for its other relatives, which would be... Um, the madrone or um, um, madrone tree, madrona, um, and then the manzanita, arbutus, is that arbutus, menzizii? No. Oh man, I'm so spacing out today on my Latin names. <laughs> I'm usually really good about it. Um, but yeah, the madrone, madrone leaves and manzanita leaves and uva ursi leaves all are very similar. And I kind of think of it as like a small, medium, large, or like, or, you know, mild, moderate, super strong, uva ursi being the milder, uh, manzanita being stronger from there, and then madrone being the strongest. The leaf is the part used. And you usually only really need to use it for a few days. And you shouldn't use the madrone for much longer than that because it can be a little too strong. Um, so I think uva ursi is the best reliable agent to use in this situation. Now, the other thing about kidney stones and things like that is, you know, obviously water is the best medicine. They need to really make sure they're drinking adequate amounts of water. And honestly, drinking the herbs as well is pretty key um, because the you want to make sure that the herbs are getting delivered into the urinary tract. My floor is like vibrating right now. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, you want to make sure that the herbs are getting delivered into the urinary tract. And the best way to make that happen is drink it as a tea, right? Um, that is going to be your best delivery mechanism. So, so Uva Ursi is very reliable here for the UTI component. Um, I've also used organ grape root or Mahonia aquifolium. Berberine is indeed secreted through the kidneys to a degree. 
So that can be useful. The yarrow is really good there. Um, there's also other herbs that are used to treat UTIs um, that have an antiseptic effect there. Um, what is the name of it? There's one herb from Africa that's used quite a bit there that's quite effective. Jeez, I am like, I'm sorry, I am like totally spacing uh, on some of my remedies today. Um, dang it, why can't I remember the name? It's like it's like right there on the tip of my tongue. Um, so, uh, but those three really are, are main ones that I've used a lot. Uva Ursi and uh, Oregon Grape and um, Yarrow. Oh, Juniper is a really good one. Juniper Berry, the essential oils in Juniper are very, very antiseptic for the kidneys and urinary tract, though you do need to be a little careful because it is a, a renal stimulant. So um, it can be maybe a little too stimulating, especially if someone has an acute kidney stone or they've got a lot of heat in there because Juniper is pretty warm. Um, ah yes, Pipsisua. Uh, Chimaphila umbellata is another really, really great one there. Um, I like it because it helps with the lymphatics also in the pelvic region because it's lymphagogue. Ah, yes. And then we have general diuretics, right? Cleavers being one of my favorites. It's soothing to the heat and irritation. It's a reliable diuretic. It's got a, a very supportive lymphatic property as well. You know, nettles, really good. Um, as well, dandelion leaf, very good, reliable diuretic. Um, and then, you know, the other thing that I think is important if there are kidney stones, if you're able to catch, catch the kidney stone um, and get it analyzed to figure out what kind of kidney stone it is, right? Is this a calcium oxalate stone? Is it um, some other, what, like, what's the mineral composition of the stone that will give you a lot of insight into the root cause of it so that you know after they've passed hopefully you can do some things to uh, prevent them from forming again um, which is always i think the best approach as uh, preventative pre preventative mechanisms so yeah great question there donald i know i threw a lot of herbal categories and potential remedies, but that should give you some insights into how to kind of strategically think through what, what types of remedies you want to consider um, to put in your formula to support this person. Um, and uh, just be, I also just want to encourage you to be patient. Um, these are not easy to treat and they can be really kind of pesky and challenging and uh, frustrating for everyone, especially the person that has the stones. So, so try to be patient, try to encourage your client to be patient. And I would also say, this is one of those things where I think it's good to make use of modern medicine when it's needed because uh, passing kidney stones, from what I have heard is and seen in other people is that literally it's like the most painful thing people have ever gone through. You know, I mean, I've um, spoken to women that have birthed children that said that uh, passing their kidney stone was about on par, uh, if not maybe a little more painful um, because uh, those stones are like, not like I said, they're not pebbles. They're literally spikes ripping through your uh, urinary tract, which I've heard is really, really painful. Um, so don't completely shunt the modern medicine. It's there for a reason. Use it if you need it. And um, hopefully hopefully your client gets well. So yeah, thanks for the question, Donald. And hopefully, hopefully that helps you um, with your case there.